Hi, everybody. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to a Friday in Stitches Family live stream crochet party. Woohoo! <laughs> it's a mouthful. It's getting longer every time. <laughs> time to party. It's time to party. Only like as li lightly as possible. Very light it's, party. It's hot and humid today, so <laughs> we, we don't want to sweat so much that we just slide right out of the this screen. Is, this is a middle aged party. This is. <laughs> This is a middle-aged party. Yeah, this is this is a this is a you know don't don't jive too hard or you might throw your back out kind of party. Yeah. We don't want to break a sweat. Okay. <laughs> um, all right, I've got uh, I got a nice glass of cool water and like you're really living it up today. Um, and uh, today we're going to talk about measurements, taking measurements, how to measure things, good measuring tools to have, kind of everything that sort of circles that concept of. Um, I have come from a background of sewing, so I started sewing, gosh, so long ago, I, I don't even really remember. <laughs> and a um, big part of making clothing, obviously, it's one of the reasons that a lot of people sew, is to make sure that you've got clothing that fits you properly. So that's a bonus to making clothing, whether you knit it, crochet it, sew it, whatever. If you're making it for yourself or someone else, you can be more exacting with fit, and that is haute couture clothing in a nutshell it's clothing made to fit the body so when you buy off the rack which most of us do because it's quicker it's easier it's often cheaper a lot of us don't know how to sew or knit or crochet you know stuff of that kind of caliber it doesn't always fit you as nicely as it could because it's made for general sizing and general sizing is just easier easier and cheaper to make when you start getting more tailored clothing or you go and have a proper suit made, it's a little more expensive because it's being made specifically to your measurements. So today we're going to talk about measurements and hopefully by the end of it, you'll have a good idea of how to um, adjust clothing. If you already have it, you maybe want to do a little bit of adjustments. You brought out the telephone. Yes, I did. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I have to I pause you for a moment. Sure. We had a little game for the Baikuna members. Yes, we did. We did. And I have to announce, I hope I got this right. Uh, I didn't see it before, but the first <laughs> member <laughs> to find our new emoji, so we have a new emoji is Darla. Darla! Way to go! <laughs> <laughs> Darla got it. That's the correct one. And Congratulations. What's, what's the new emoji? You guys sing it out? The new emoji is made? a daisy. It's a daisy. It's a, a wild daisy I took a photo of in our backyard i love daisies they're so it's very very cute. so happy and sunny even they even look like they're going <laughs> <laughs> now mary is is posting the new daisy emoji i love it i'm pretty proud of it it's I, fresh. I think it looks really cute in summer it's like the perfect little thing to kind of hey summer starts there's tomorrow, bethany it? and sherry everyone's using the new emoji Wee. and then if you attach these ones together <laughs> you get a really happy summery summer vibe yeah flowers i love yes. it yes so many cute. It's summertime. It so. is. Yeah, summer starts tomorrow, I think. Is it tomorrow? That's what the calendar oh, says. Okay. <laughs> well, you got to believe the it's calendar. It's always somewhere between the 20th, the 21st, the 22nd, somewhere around there. So. <laughs> I'm a little rusty. Oh, it's, I was going to say it sounded like. You're not rusty. That no? sounds good. We have a super chat. Oh, no way. <laughs> This is from Nate. I thought you were just serenading. Nate, Nate, um, Hi, Nate. Nate should probably be Nate, sleeping. Nate, she should be sleeping. She should be sleeping it's, right it's now. It's because the little miss is up. Ah. Well, thank <laughs> you very much. It, thank you to Nate thank from you. New Zealand. Mm -hmm. uh, Nate says, not sure how long I'll be around. So quick hello for me and the nugget. <laughs> it's 3.30. I, I presume that's a.m. Yes. 3.30 a.m. in the morning, but bleary-eyed at the moment. <laughs> Aww. Oh, we're so glad you could make it. That's great. Thanks for joining us, Nay. <laughs> that's early. That's yeah, early. That's, three thirty a.m. That's dark. Even the birds aren't up yet. That's usually that's about half an hour before the uh, birds start waking me up. Start screaming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the birds doing their tune. It's cute. Like it's gonna be a great it's morning. Be a beautiful day. Five hours from now. <laughs> yeah. Well, you guys. Shut up. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of bird song in the morning. I like it. Yeah, and of course we don't it's have. It's cute. It's cute. We we have the windows open, so of course they they like to like. I swear, some of them land like as close to the window as possible and sort of beep beep beep, beep like they they aim it right in the. Window. 
<laughs> okay, so meanwhile, back to measurements. Um, if you want to adjust clothing, it's important to know your measurements. If you want to try and adjust a pattern, it's very important to know your measurements. Now, the last time we had a live stream, we talked about gauge. And if you need a reviewer on that, uh, we'll make sure the link to that live stream party is in the description box uh, once this becomes a video. And it's, it's helpful. So a gauge is really important when you're following a pattern or if you're designing something. And gauge also ties in very neatly with measurements, which is another reason we thought we would talk about them today. Um, so one of the biggest questions we get asked is, is there a, an easy way or what's the trick or the secret or the hack to adjusting a sweater pattern to fit myself or someone else? And the answer is, there is no quick <laughs> one, <laughs> one sort of a thing fits all uh, attachment to that. So you have to, you, you need to know your measurements <laughs> and you also need to understand uh, a few things about the pattern. So for example, if the pattern is using a specific pattern stitch and when I say a pattern stitch I mean something that's based on a multiple so think of like a shell stitch or a v stitch or a ladies fan stitch or something that's really complicated maybe has multiple rows of pattern sort of design involved to make one sort of pattern repeat <laughs> the pattern stitch if a sweater uses a pattern stitch then it is based on a multiplier and when I say multiplier I mean like the foundation chain the number of chains you have to start with this can be tricky. So depending on how it's designed, there might be a very specific number that you have to use. So you can't necessarily go, oh, well, this is a multiple of three multiplier. I'll just, you know, go to the next three to make it bigger or go down a few sets of three to make it smaller. Depending on the sweater pattern and who designed it, it could be just so specific that um, you can't necessarily do that. So trying to adjust a sweater pattern that's based on a stitch pattern is the most complicated and difficult. <laughs> I'm sorry. Da um, a lot of people are using the new Daisy emoji. It's obviously very popular. I'm happy about that. Um, and Nace, name did a Daisy chain. Oh, cool. <laughs> he did our emoji with a bunch of um, with um, paper clip in between. Oh, wait, that's smart. It's I like cute. That. <laughs> I like it. That made me laugh. Cute. Um, uh, thanks to Shelly. Shelly discovered the new emoji also. Nice. And you're getting a lot of compliments oh. on your little dress. Thank you. I'll stand up in a moment and I'll show it to you. I made this. And that's actually one of the reasons I'm wearing it because we want to talk about measurements and I want to talk about having made something to actually fit perfectly and all of the variations involved in that. But I just want to finish my little thought on sweaters first. Um, so if you're working on a sweater, like a knit sweater, that's just the knit stitch or a sweater that's just a basic crochet stitch, like um, double crochet, half double crochet, single crochet, there's no fancy V stitches or anything else like that going on. That means there's no specific multiplier, which means that you can adjust that pattern typically to fit you a lot easier because you don't have to worry about a, a base multiplier of chains to begin with. Um, when you are adjusting sizing for a sweater, you want to think about um, how it's laid out. So is it what kind of pieces is it made in? Is it made sort of back and then front pieces and then the sweater sleeves go on afterwards? Is it made sleeve to sleeve like some of them are? Is it a top down sort of starts at the neck and works all the way down, breaks for armholes and then finishes the rest like a big tube? So there's a lot of different ways to make a sweater, whether you're knitting or crocheting. And that can also strongly adjust how you would change the sizing. So like I said, it's not that easy to say, oh, it's easy if you're, if you're you know, an inch larger then you just go up to two stitches. It's never that easy, which is another reason why it's important to work on your gauge. So if you pick a sweater pattern and you pick a sweater pattern that says, you know, sizes small, medium, large, and extra large included, um, then that also opens a whole door of what exactly is small, medium, large, extra large? What are all those sizes? Because they tend to vary depending on where you shop. But if you kind of know that you generally fall into the medium category or you generally fall into the extra large category, then it's important to sit down with that pattern and work out the gauge. So if there's a little gauge thing, we talked about this before, make up the gauge swatch, measure it using your measuring tape. We'll talk about those in a second too. And make sure that you are getting the closest to the measurement as possible. If you want it a little on the larger side, here's an easy hack. Make the gauge up and try to make it a little bit larger. So if it says use a 5.5 millimeter hook, this you know medium size weight yarn, here's the gauge. 
it should be 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. Well, if it comes out 12 by 12 centimeters, that means that the entire sweater will upsize if you stick with that hook and yarn, which might be useful for you if you want it to be kind of a looser fit. So you're making the extra large size, but your gauge swatch tells you that you're light, largely two centimeters off what it tells you to be, then it will just generally upsize a little bit. So that's something to keep in mind. If you want it to be a little bit smaller, maybe you are a really like small person, um, or you're a teen, and so you're a little bit narrower still than maybe like your mom, then if you are making a sweater pattern and you're going to go for the size small, but you know that smalls are still kind of a little bit like, you know, big on you in places, then make up that gauge. And if it makes up just a little bit smaller than the measurements suggested for your final sampler size, then you can go with that and the whole thing will size down a little bit. So that's an easy way to size up or size down a small amount based on just changing up your hook and yarn. <laughs> Um, here's a little, here's a little, um, off to the, off to the side question mm -hmm. from one of our, uh, channel members. This is from Sherry. Sherry asks, Jade, I have a question for sure. you. Do you ever find yourself holding your breath when you are crocheting? Do I ever find myself holding my breath? No, I do find myself holding my breath if I'm watching anything with scuba diving in it though, because I, I, I can't underwater. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't, I don't hold my breath. Um, I, I do sometimes hold myself tight if I'm like thinking about something um, that makes me tight while I'm crocheting or if I'm really motoring and I've got like really great music on then I might notice that my shoulders are like up here. I'm like, oh yeah, just <laughs> relax. But I don't think I hold my breath. I hold my breath if I'm watching scuba diving. <laughs> Anything, anything, uh, anything, anything the, underwater. Anything related. underwater. Yeah, Mr. Sisters will look over and I'll be going, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Yeah, like when we go through tunnels that are oh, go I can't. underwater. Oh, or, yeah, I can't do it. Watching like uh, shark movies. I love, I love the water. I love to be on the water. I love to be near the water. I like to be in the water, but I, I don't like to be under the water. And I don't like to look at anything underwater. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the only time I think I find myself holding my breath. Um, Cute. Yeah, <laughs> that's a cute, that's a cute question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I, other, I, I get uh, tight. Actually, a few other people have mentioned that they do. I get they tight. Also do I, I guess it's the same thing, holding it's, your breath, being tight. Yeah, it's just another yeah. version of getting tight. Maybe your thoughts are My wandering. My thoughts are somewhere, or I'm like, if I'm really, like, really, you know, motoring, or I'm listening to music, or I'm watching, like, a YouTube channel um, that that kind of, like, makes me want to move a little faster, I tend to tighten up. So, so yeah, that's, that's probably very normal. <laughs> <laughs> bung, 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 bung. Bung, 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 bung. It's an in stitches moment. <laughs> it's an in stitches moment. We have a super chat. This is from Jules Gamer. Jules Gamer, thank you. <laughs> Jules Gamer asks, "What is a good wool project?" A good wool project. I have a Lion Brand wool, the Hades, Hades color. Hades. 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 H a d e s. Hades. Hades. Yeah. The Hades color. Is it good for a rug for a bed? I am not familiar. Is that like the super chunky? Well, like what's the, is that the name of the color or the name of the actual wool style? Cause I'm not familiar with that at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not yet. Um, I will say this. So here's a general thing about rug making off to the side. Wool can often be a good fiber for making a rug because wool can be quite strong and resilient, but it should be yarn that's fairly um, tightly spun. If it's really loose, like a roving, like you could like just tug and the whole thing pulls apart on you, then just imagine walking over that rug a few times. The rug itself will want to do that too. So um, if it's tightly spun, um, I'm not so tight that we're talking like crochet thread, but if it's like really tightly wound, there's not a lot of fluffies, it doesn't look loose, then wool is a good fiber for a rug because most carpets are made out of a kind of wool. Hades is the color. The Hades color is the is color. Hades. Okay. And if, well, as it's, long a, as, it's a wool ease. It's a wool, oh, wool ease. Yeah. What do I make a, if it's, I think you mentioned it being a bedside rug. I seem to recall well, this. Wool is a very strong fiber. Wool's a strong fiber. So it's just if it's loosely spun, then it's going to want to pull apart, pull apart yeah. and that won't make for a good rug because and you're, you you're walking it, on uh, it. Will it shrink? If you wool wash shrink? it in hot, it, it will shrink. shrink. Yeah. If you wash it in a washing machine, it will felt. If you, mm. wool is a delicate thing. So first follow the instructions on the label for, for care and think to yourself, do I want to hand wash this that? every single time yeah. or do I want to 
you know, like look at the care instructions and think about the use of the yes. rug. Thank you for looking that up, everyone. Yeah. I would do that, but our internet is so slow, it'll make our stream even worse. So I can't, I can't go bouncing around the internet while we're streaming. Oh, yeah. I, but if, I, if other uh, viewers can. If you've that, got that, good internet. If you've got good help internet, us out. please uh, <laughs> feel free to do a quick, a quick search Beautiful. and let us know. I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, you know, in general terms, wool is a good fiber for rug making because it's durable. If you're going to wash it, I recommend washing wool anything by hand because it'll look nicer longer. Um, but if it says, you know, oh, you can wash this in the washing machine, follow the instructions. And if you're unsure, but you do want to wash it in the washing machine, cold or lukewarm, but I would go cold water. And you might want to get one of those laundry bags that you can put like lingerie in. It'll just kind of keep it from bouncing and rubbing because when you do this underwater with with something wool that's been knit or crocheted it felt that's actually how you get felt and that can be a really cool effect but not necessarily what you want in your rug so <laughs> oh oh now you're getting fancy i'm wearing up <laughs> we it. had uh, one of our members upgraded to silk oh no way thank you <laughs> so a big thank you to Agen Moria. Ogden <laughs> Morla. Ogden Morla. Yeah, Ogden Morla. That's. I think I said that Ogden right. Ogden Morla. Thank you very much. Cool, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so back to measurements. I'm going to talk about one of the things you should have in your crochet or sewing or knitting uh, tool uh, assembly that is really important. And it's good to kind of have one if you've got like a, if you're like me and you've got a home crochet pile of tools and you've got a crochet pile of tools that you take with you on the go, um, have a measuring tape everywhere. <laughs> so a lot of you have seen this one. This is my little sheet measuring tape that mom and stitches got me. You pull on his tail. And um, I also have another one that Mr. and stitches got me. And basically it's the same thing. So this is inside this little furry body. And what it is, is there's a little button right here in the middle and you can pull it out. You hear that? That's because it has an auto lock. So when you pull it out, it sort of stops. So it's not constantly like retracting on you, but when you want it to retract, you can just press that little button and the whole thing kind of zips closed. So this is a really nice kind of measuring tape. It's not absolutely necessary, but if you want to treat yourself and you want to have a really nice measuring tape that will not get tangled and you can always sort of, you know, grab it, you can easily put it in something. It's not going to wrap itself around other stuff. Then this is the kind of measuring tape that you want to pick up. They're not expensive. You can find them in sewing stores, uh, knitting and crochet stores. You can find them in craft stores. You can find them in um, on Amazon. Amazon's got dozens of them. And they, they run the gamut from, you know, really nice to pretty cheap. So this one's like a little faux leather case, which I like. And of course, this one's a little, a little, <laughs> little woolly sheep. This is the one I carry in my um, travel crochet kit. So it's just a simple little thing. And it completely unfolds. Most of these measuring tapes, these are sort of sewing, sewing tapes, are about 60 inches. They go about 60 inches. And let's see. Yep, 60 inches with a little bit of extra on the end. And I prefer, so if you can get them, get a measuring tape that has inches on one side and centimeters on the other. So even if you live in a country that uses especially, like, just is all metric, like, we're very, we're all metric here in, in Canada. But I still like to take measurements in inches. I don't like to take measurements in centimeters. And that's probably because I was raised by a generation that only understood sort of the, the I think they call it the empirical or the imperial empire, help me out Americans, the, uh, the inches and feet and miles, that sort of system. They transitioned to the metric system here in Canada when we were starting school. So we only learned metric, we didn't learn the other things. But um, all of the ladies in my family who did any sewing or knitting or crocheting all of course still used inches. And that's how I learned. I learned um, using inches. And I just find that inches are a more hmm, body friendly, um, bigger rounding unit. So I still like to measure a lot in, in inches. I will do little things in centimeters, but um, I like to have both. There's another good reason. If you have a pattern that is older, that is from a different part of the world, it might be in inches only. It might be in the metric system only. And it's really important that you can easily go, oh, well, let's see here, nine inches. If I flip that over, oh, that's about 23 centimeters. It's important to be able to move between the two and having a uh, measuring tape with it on both sides is really handy just so you can 
<clears throat> open yourself up to more pattern options. You don't feel stuck like, oh, well, if it's only in inches, that's the only one I can use. Or if it's only in metric, I, I can't understand it. So it's good to have a measuring tape that does both. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm having a little giggle here because Jolene says, that, um, they told us, uh, us kids, we'd be transitioning to metric by 1980. That didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's... I like both. Honestly, I measure, I, I like to we measure. We kind of bounce between both here We in really do, yeah. If you're eyeballing something, it's easier to eyeball it, I feel, in inches than it is to eyeball it in centimeters. Mm -hmm. Now or that's, feet. That's because of how we were raised. Yeah. I don't know if that's, you know, feet but feet, meters. if you're sort of like measuring something in the backyard or whatever, or yeah. in a room, feet over <laughs> decimeters. Like, yeah. I don't think I've ever measured anything in a decimeter, but anyway. <laughs> I still recommend millimeters. millimeters yeah. I, I still recommend million, having 254 millimeters. 254 millimeters. Yeah. Um, like they, they measure, it says this other thing, like completely off talking about measurements. They measure snow in centimeters. They measure rain in millimeters. Why? <laughs> Cause there's a lot less rain. Like the rain. Yeah. But if you the get accumulation, if is you a get lot two, smaller amount. if you get 20 millimeters of rain, that's two centimeters. But it's like 20 millimeters yeah, of rain. That's, that's true. So why don't you just say, well, we're getting 20 millimeters of snow? <laughs> I don't know. I think it's silly. <laughs> that's my theory. That's, yeah, you're probably right. You usually are. I just, <laughs> I find that kind of. What? <laughs> okay. Everyone just heard that live across the world. Is there some balloons we can drop or something? Woohoo! <laughs> I'm going to replay that scene. I'm going to make a, an entire bit, hour video of just that. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to make a GIF of that for an hour. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, one more thing. I also have a vintage <laughs> measuring tape. This came out of my grandmother's <laughs> sewing kit. It's fabric, so the numbers are printed on it. It's even starting to fray. It's quite old, but I keep it because I love the look of it. I love that those huge numbers. And this one is only inches on both sides because this this predates the metric system here in Canada. But I like it because um, going one way, so no matter how you pick up this, this measuring tape, you've always got the right end. So that that's, starts at one, but if I picked it up the other way, it starts at the very end at 60 inches. So I kind of like that because no matter which way you grab it, it's always right. <laughs> By the way, I have a lot of witnesses here. Oh, do you? Uh -huh. they're, they're it's all, all recorded. <laughs> it's all recorded. They're all making it's going to be stored on the internet forever. <laughs> Uh, so I recommend having one in your travel kit, having one in your regular kit, having a sewing or having a measuring tape is really important. Um, and it should be flexible. So this one's plastic. It's nice and flexible. This one's fabric. These guys that one's are adorable. These ones are nice and flexible because if you're measuring your body, you can't use the measuring tape that you would measure a room with. So measuring tapes that you measure like for construction, for uh, carpentry, they're usually like, I think like aluminum, like a thin metal. And they, they, the, the whole point in that is so that you can measure a long distance or you can hook hook that that tape on the end of like a plank of wood and pull it and it's it keeps it sort of strength. But it's really difficult to like measure your head or an organic object with that kind of a measuring tape. So these are the kind of measuring tapes you want to have in your kit. Um, and I, I recommend any one of them, but these are really fun. These ones that just auto retract on their own. So how to measure, how to measure different parts of the body. Depending on the kind of thing you're going to make will largely change where you take measurements, how you take measurements. Um, it's important to kind of know your measurements, especially if you're really getting serious into um, sewing or um, into making sweaters or things like that. I'm going to say that from my own personal experience, other people might might kind of disagree with this, but I'm going to say that sweater making is the trickiest to get all of the measurements right. Because especially on a woman, because there are so many little measurements to think about. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. But here's the first one. We're going to start at the head. We're going to work our way down. I'm going to show you all the different ways that you should be measuring yourself or someone else. And um, if anybody has any questions, um, hopefully I'll be able to answer them, but we'll get to some of them at the end too. So <clears throat> let's start at the top. Before we're going we start. Yeah. I'm going to have a little sip of my water here. I'm just making sure I screenshot everyone that witnessed, uh, <laughs> you are not. witnessed that a while ago. Thank you, everyone, for your support. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, it's a Jada and Stitches moment. <laughs> Welcome, shoppers. It's an Instagram Welcome, viewers, Welcome to Jada and Stitches. Bing, bing, bing. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> this is from Jules Gamer. She's the one that asked about the wool. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so we have a little extra information okay. here. It's Mandela wool blend. Okay. 80% acrylic. Okay. Uh, oh, 80% acrylic. 20% wool, I guess. Uh, 150 grams, three balls. All right. Well, um, depending, the amount of yarn you need for a project will vary depending on the size of the rug, the stitch you're going to use, the size of the hook, the size of the yarn. So I don't know if you have enough yarn to make a bedside rug. <laughs> <laughs> off the top, but because it's an 80% acrylic blend, the wool is giving the yarn some strength here and the acrylic is going to um, probably make it hold up in the wash a little better. Like it's not gonna wanna felt, it's not gonna wanna pull apart. Um, I've never made a rug out of that stuff. So I can't really say for sure whether it would hold up to high traffic or just, you know, putting your feet down on it in the morning or not. Can I give my two cents? Sure. I'm going to guess that if it's 80% acrylic, then it'd probably be fine for a rug. It's especially not a rug that's a rug that's not in a high traffic area yeah. or a bathroom. Like a front door? No, no. probably not. It's like, like you're going to want to wash or clean. Regularly. So for example, I've made a couple but of rugs. Like in front of, like sometimes you put a rug in your, in your bedroom or at your bedside yeah. or whatever, it'd be fine. Yeah, I've got, I've got a rug that I made out of all acrylic and one that I made out of partial wool, like a wool blend. And they just sit in the craft room under my feet. So they don't get a lot of high, ooh. <laughs> they don't get a lot of high traffic and they're fine. They're holding up just great. I also don't need to wash them as often because they're also not in a high traffic area. You want area. some um, <clears throat> You're making ginger me, uh, ale? That would be nice. Can you hear it? Yeah, I can hear it. <laughs> uh, one more thought on rugs though before we leave completely. I'll have some in a bit. Thank yeah, you. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have made four rugs for our house so far. I've got, no, five, I guess. Um, two half circles, one circle. They're in... The two of them are in bathrooms, so they get a lot of sort of traffic, plus they get subject to humidity and wet feet walking on them. I made them out of complete cotton, so 100% cotton. Mm -hmm. They're also really easy to wash, and they come out of the washing machine looking fine, and you can even just toss them back on the tile floor to let them dry. Um, so if it's going into a bathroom or a super high traffic area, I recommend 100% cotton. I've got two other rugs that I made um, that were scrap rugs. And one of them sits at our um, back door where we kind of go in and out, and we we stomp across that thing multiple times a day and I made it out of uh, two strands of cotton, hundred percent cotton yarn held together. And just a simple, that thing, doesn't, that thing doesn't even change. It doesn't think, change. It doesn't warp. It doesn't washed pull it like three, four times. We've washed it, it several times. Like, co color stays, the way it looks, stay, everything yeah. stays. Cotton is my favorite choice for a rug, but cotton blend, uh, maybe even a cotton wool blend would be fine too, but I've made most of my rugs out of cotton. So that's the experience I'm talking about. <laughs> But uh, <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna jump, jump into okay, how to take measurements. In. Oh, I'm trying to get to it. <laughs> Welcome to Jaden Stitches. Welcome Sitches. to Jaden Stitches. Um, this is a super chat from Liz. Hi, Liz. Thank you. Liz wants to know. I'm just wondering all the trouble you have with squirrels. Why do you have one behind you? <laughs> is it a uh, tribute to appease the squirrel gods? I love squirrels. <laughs> We just joke about how they really interrupt our internet all the time because they, because, okay, here's the, here's a short Cole's yes. notes on squirrels. Squirrels are crazy. <laughs> Especially the red ones. Especially the red the, ones. The and we have red squirrels in the backyard and they are crazy. They're hilarious. They don't know whether they're coming or going. They don't know whether they're right side up or upside down. They're absolutely nuts. They're constantly screaming and chattering and chipping and squeaking at each but other. But we love them and they make us laugh. But they make us laugh so much. And I have called my wonderful mother-in-law the squirrel for the longest time because she moves at that speed. I've never met anyone who moves that fast. So squirrels have a very big place in my heart. I love them. They're cute. They're furry. They're crazy. They're funny. They move fast. They, they, they bury nuts. I just think they're hilarious. And, and we kind of envision the things that interrupt our internet on a regular basis mm -hmm. as squirrel-like. That's hence the, hence inside, the, the inside joke. <laughs> so when I saw this squirrel notebook, I love notebooks, I collect them. Um, I absolutely had to have it. <laughs> squirrels. <laughs> we also have chipmunks <clears throat> yes. and the black squirrels. There's a big difference between the red squirrels and the black squirrels. Yeah, the black squirrels are quiet. They're, like, they're, like they're gentle. They're like little teddy bears. They don't, they're gentle. They're, they don't move that as fast. Yeah. And the red squirrels just... But the red ones will scream at you. The red ones are like this big. <laughs> and they'll take on the black squirrels, which are like this big. They'll take on anybody. They're hilarious. 
even even me, if I go out to put some food down, like for the birds and whatnot, they'll run just a bit up the tree and they'll sit there like. But <laughs> I like the idea of appeasing the squirrel gods. Yes. Trying to, you know, like go easy. We're always doing go that. easy on us. <laughs> Please don't interrupt. Our we do that on a daily basis. <laughs> it's true. Before you start. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Jada and Stitches moment. It's Jada and Stitches moment. Sip. You're going to learn about crochet. And squirrels. <laughs> um, a big thank you for a super chat from Cecilia. Thank you, Cecilia. <laughs> thank you very much, everyone. Okay. Without further ado, into measurements. So we're going to start on our head. Now, whether you want to measure yourself in inches or centimeters, it's entirely up to you. It doesn't matter. But... Be consistent. Don't measure sort of like one half of your body in centimeters and then the other half like in inches because that can become quite confusing. It's a good idea to write them down and write things that will help you remember what it is. So for example, if you're measuring the circumference of your head, write head circumference or head CR, CIR period for short. Don't just write head because there are other measurements that you can take of your head. If you're measuring the circumference of your head, and this is really helpful if you're making a hat, a headband, if you're making a hairband, if you're making um, something to just kind of like a hood, you maybe want to make sure you know kind of just how deep your head is. Take your measuring tape and wrap it <clears throat> around the back of your head and over your ears and over to the very center of your forehead. So. Your head should be, it's basically the circumference, the circle around your head. So all the way around your head, over your ears, and meeting in the center. Now, if you're making a hairband, then you can wrap it under your ears because typically you want a hairband to be a little on the tighter side. But for hats, typically hats go over your ears. So make sure you're measuring over your ears. And that can actually make the difference of a few centimeters. The measurement, the circumference measurement of your head basically tells you how big around the opening of your hat should be. If you're using a super stretchy yarn or a super stretchy stitch pattern, because some patterns are very stretchy, then you should know that if you're, let's say your head circumference is 22 inches, then if you've got a stretchy yarn or you're using a stretchy sort of stitch pattern, always make a little sampler first if you're unsure then you need to make that foundation chain or you need to sort of expand that top so the, to the point where you're getting to the circumference to be pretty tight to that measurement because there is gonna be some stretching. Um, if it's really stretchy, maybe give yourself like, make it, make aim for a circumference of 21, like a whole inch less or a whole two and a half centimeters less. That's if you're using really stretchy yarn or stretchy stitch. And also hats do sometimes kind of stretch out with you. So you don't want to, you don't want to be too stingy with your measurements. You want to um, give yourself a little bit of breathing room, but not too much because your hat might stretch a little bit. So that's how you measure for a hat or a headband. And like I said, if you're making it like a hairband, measure underneath the ears. The crown. So sometimes you want to know how deep to make a hat. So if you're making a hat that's top down, or even if you're just working all the way up, if you don't have the head handy, or even if you're sort of trying to fit it on yourself, it's always good to try stuff on as you go. That just goes for anything. But this is the measurement I like. So they talk about crown depth. They're talking about this much of your head. So basically from like where the head starts to curve to about the ear, that's the crown depth. This varies depending on the designer, depending on the hat. When I'm making a hat, especially because when you're crocheting or knitting, you have to go, there's a top, and then there's a sort of a curving part that comes down over your ears. And whether you're going up and closing it up or you're starting small and opening up, you've got this whole extra space up here and you don't wanna forget about that. So what I like to do is take my measuring tape, find the very center of my head, and then measure down to about the bottom of my ear. That's where I figure a hat's gonna go. Now with a hat, you can typically roll up the brim if you make it a little too long. If it's a headband, you've got all that extra space up there, but you don't need this measurement if you're making a headband. That is to measure the depth of a hat. And typically, what is that about? That's about, so from the very center of my head all the way down to the bottom of my ear, that's nine inches. How does that translate to a hat? If you're crocheting a tube that you're going to close at the top, that is the measurement you want, nine inches, before you close it up. 
So that, that basically makes it curved the top. If you're working from the top out, you're starting with a nice circle that covers your head and then you're working down. That is different. That's when you want that shorter little measurement there. So if you're starting at the top and working all your way down and you've got a circle and you made your circle wide enough so that the circumference matches this measurement, then from here, which would be say the edge of the circle and you're just gonna work straight, that's the measurement you want. So from about the curve of the head, and this can be again, a little bit on the, you know, sort of the, uh, that you can kind of round up or round down with a hat you can roll at the bottom usually. It's from just about the curve of the top of your head where it starts to curve down. And on, an, on adults, that's usually six inches. I've got six inches here, maybe five inches for a child. So that's the difference in measurements for the head. <laughs> she says, taking a sip of wine. I'm gonna have that ginger ale now, thank you. <laughs> that's pretty. <laughs> Whee! Um, I've got a couple of things to get sure. to here. We have, Sherry has upgraded her membership to Merino. <laughs> Thank you, Sherry. Thank you, Sherry, for upgrading. And we've got a super chat from Nani May. Oh. Hi, Nani. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a super sticker. It's a super sticker. It's a little fox. And he's Aww. going like, woohoo. It's very cute. <laughs> Thank you. Very cute little anime style fox. Aww. I love foxes. Thank you, everyone. We had one in the, we had one in the back deck. A couple days ago, yes. looking at the squirrels. Yes. <laughs> the silly squirrels. They won't stop talking. And so it attracts the squirrel fox. and red fox. Mm -hmm. <laughs> great, great. Okay, let's move down to the neck. So there's a couple measurements you might want for the neck. The one that's most important, though, typically if you're making a collar, whether it's an actual collar or if you're opening, you needed a collar opening for a sweater, it's best to take your measurement down here. So down at the very base of your neck, because that's typically where an item of clothing sits. Think about where your clothing sits when you go to make your measurements. Um, I like to have it go all the way around the back of my neck. And then right here, right where that, what is that cart, part called? I forget what this is called. That little divot you have sort of where the, your neck is. I don't know what that's called. Anyway, <laughs> right there, that's where I measure it to. And my exact measurement there is 13 inches. <clears throat> If I was making a pretty collar or a necklace or a choker, something that I wanted to really show off that part of my neck, that would be the measurement I take, 13 inches. If I'm making a sweater or a poncho or something that has to fit over top of my head, I wanna keep in mind that 13 inches is the circumference of my neck, that's kind of where I want it to set. But if it's gonna be pulled down over my head, it has to be able to fit over my head. And the circumference of my head is 22 inches. So I would either have to make it out of a very stretchy fabric <clears throat> or a stretchy stitch, like a ribbing stitch, for it to be able to go foop, pull over my head. I had my grandmother made me a beautiful sweater once and I couldn't get it over my head because the neck was just too tight. It was really upsetting because she just made it just a little too tight. It wouldn't go over my, my head. <laughs> so keep that in mind. If it's something you're gonna be pulling over your head, even if this is 13 inches, it's gotta be able to get over the, the 22 inch circumference or whatever that circumference of your head is. If you are making a zip up article, a tie up article, a button up article, then you can be much more exacting with this. So if 13 inches is what's comfortable around your neck without it feeling like it's, it's cutting off your air supply, then you can work with that measurement if you're making an article of clothing that just buttons up or zips up or ties on. Um, so that's, that's the neck. Okay, the other major ones are mostly torso related. So there's little things, sometimes if you're making a sweater that's got front panels and it's like, it, you know, the, the seam is supposed to sit right on your shoulder, this is a measurement you might want. So if you're making a sweater, there's just a back, maybe you might notice that little dip at the back for the neck, but the front panels might look like a vest. So it starts out like this, there's a little scoop for the arm and then it goes down, it looks a bit like a vest. This section up here that attaches to the back of your sweater this section is what that measurement is. So if you want it to sit right on the edge of the shoulder and nice tailored clothing sits right on the edge of the shoulder, it doesn't fall down over the side, it doesn't sit up too, too far, it sits right on the edge of the shoulder, that's a nice tailored look. Then that measurement is from your neck. So if you're measuring your neck, where does that comfortably <laughs> fall? Here. So from this point, you measure from this point along to the edge of your shoulder. So like this, another reason I like these is because there's a bit of weight on them. So when you're measuring like longer distances on yourself, having a little bit of weight on the bottom of your measuring tape helps a lot. 
Another little sip of mine. Looking good, honey. Yeah, so far so good. Yeah. A um, couple of things to get to. Sure. Oh, I missed. <laughs> it's the ginger it's, ale. It's I've been going a little too heavy on it. <laughs> Let me try that again. This is the Jada and Stitches moment. <laughs> There we go. I got it. Wee. I got to dial back the ginger ale. <laughs> Half a ginger ale. Actually, room. I think it was the three cups of coffee. That I, might be I'm it. holding You're... this thing and I'm, I'm like waving it like a flag <laughs> on, you know, <laughs> at a parade. <laughs> so we have a super sticker from Donna. Thank you, Donna. Big thank you to Donna. <laughs> it is someone sitting there like this with a bunch of hearts and Aww. saying, You're number one. Aww. Really cute. <laughs> And we have a new member. Uh, welcome to our Silk Level. And this is, I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, Lyra. Lyra. L-Y-R-A. Lyra. Lyra. I think that's Lyra. Yeah. Well, that's welcome, thank you. Lyra. Welcome. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, so continuing from the top down, that's the measurement for that little piece of your sweater or shirt, whatever you're making, that's going to sit between your neck and your... Um, the edge of your shoulder, and that's to get a nice fit. That's what that measurement is. Let's talk about torso. I'm going to stand up for this because it's a little easier to demonstrate. So let me just have a little sip of my... While you're sipping. <laughs> Bing. We have a super chat from Montana. Hey, Montana, thank you. Montana says, finally caught y'all live again. <laughs> Hope you have a wonderful day. Aw. You too. Thank you, Montana. Thank you. All right, so, <clears throat> standing up. I got I got the name right, Lyra's correct. Lyra's correct? Correct. Welcome, Ly welcome, Lyra, and check out our custom emojis. You see a little smiley face underneath the live chat. We have a whole bunch of custom emojis here. That's where our new daisy is. Yeah, and you can use our new daisy. Bye -bye. Okay, so hold on a sec. I got to get back to the... Uh... Back to the view. Here we go. We have a sip of my... Yeah, now you're good. Um, okay. Okay, I've got... We're getting, we're getting hammered with... Um, we're getting hammered with stuff. So do you want to... Do you want me to go through this first, or do you want to... Sure, we can go through that first. Okay, so... I'll do this quickly. <laughs> so, few big thank yous to get to. Uh, we've got a new member, Tracy. Hi, Tracy. Welcome, welcome to Alpaca. <laughs> and uh, Reba54. Hi, Reba. Upgraded to Vicuna. All right. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> um, and a big thank you to Katrina's Crochet World. Hey. Excuse me. Thank you for the $20 super chat. Thank you very much. Appreciate Thank that. Thank you very much. Okay, so we're back to measurements here. I'm standing up. Um, I wore this dress because I feel like it is kind of a good way to demonstrate different parts of the body. Um, so a few things to keep in mind. First, we're going to talk about bosom, bust, chest area. This can vary on children, men, Women, as we know, we're all a little bit different here. Um, children are nice because they're pretty much just sort of like a little tube. And so making sweaters and clothing for kids is, is nice. If you take like a little measurement all the way around, um, typically t-shirts can fit boys or girls. Um, so that's nice to keep in mind. Men are going to be much broader through the shoulders typically than, than that's women. That's right. <laughs> Very broad. So if you're taking measurements for men to make a sweater, don't forget this measurement. And I'm going to show you. That is basically this one around here. And the only reason it's good to know that is because it also kind of has a lot to do with their chest area. Some men are, are pretty, like, barrel-chested, like they're big through the chest. So That's you always, right. <laughs> you always want to get that area. So you always want to measure the chest. Don't forget the square jaw. The jaw has nothing. And the hair, the perfect, like, little <laughs> quaff. little quaff flip. <laughs> okay, if you're measuring the chest area, you want to measure the biggest area of the chest. And this is important because when you wear something, you don't want to feel constricted. So you want to bring your measuring tape up, if you're doing it on yourself, you want to bring it up over top of those, those bones, those little sort of shoulder blades there. And you want to find the widest part. So on a guy or a girl... Take a deep breath in because there can be an entire inch or more of difference between your chest when you're sort of relaxed and when you take a deep breath. And the worst thing, especially if you're making a tight fit dress or a nice form fitting tailored article of clothing, even if it's crocheted or knit, 
if you take a deep breath and it feels constricted, it's not nice. So you want to make sure that you are accounting for your lung capacity. I should have got my laser pointer. I could have like pointed at what you were saying. <laughs> <laughs> or just a big long stick, maybe. Just a big long stick. <laughs> Basically, what you want to do is find the, the widest area. So you, this might take a couple measurements. So you measure all the way around the bust area. Make sure that it hasn't fallen down behind you. Take a deep breath. Make sure that you're measuring when you're on that deep breath. This is the same for guys or girls. And, you know, maybe measure measure in a couple different places just in case your, you know, bosom is sitting in a different location. Ladies, this is sort of good for you to keep in mind. If you are making a an item of clothing, a sweater, a, a shirt, top skirt, dress, anything that's going to go over your chest, and you're going to be wearing a specific bra with it, put that bra on and then take your measurements. And it's good to do it literally in your underwear. So, you know, take, take your clothes off, make sure you're wearing the bra that you'll most likely be wearing underneath that top because bras can change. Some of them are padded. Some of them are really padded and some of them are push-ups. Some of them are flattening, you know, they're, they're kind of, they all sort of run the, the gamut. So put on the bra that you're most likely to wear with that article of clothing and then Take that measurement in the bra only. That's very important. Remember to breathe in. Um, on guys, they can be in a t-shirt or their undershirt or something. That doesn't matter too much. Just make sure they take a nice deep breath so you can get that the full girth of their, their chest capacity. And that's usually through sort of just underneath the shoulder blades to out front. If you are making a dress or a top that isn't going to require a specific bra construction, then don't wear the bra and take your measurements. If you're a little older, you might notice that your shelf is sitting a little lower than it used to when you were you know, younger. So make sure you keep measuring. So if you take your bra off because you're going to be wearing something that doesn't require a bra, some dresses are like that. They're kind of built to be with built in things. Um, take the measurements with the bra off because you don't want the extra padding accounted for if you're going to be making something that's very tailored with sort of, you know, built in shelf components <laughs> um, and take it, take the measurements where you naturally settle into the widest area. So it doesn't matter whether they sit up high or they sit down a little lower, take that measurement there. Waist. The waist is not where you think it is. <laughs> Especially when you look at clothing, like everybody's pants sit down around their, their hips. The waist is right underneath where your rib cage ends. So if your rib cage, find sort of the bottom of your rib cage, and that should be your narrowest section. Should be, isn't always. So you find your rib cage, you find the narrowest section, and that is your waist. So you measure all the way around that narrowest section. It's a lot higher than where most people's pants end. Pants sometimes do up here, like the sort of the trendy thing is to wear them a little lower. Your, your, your waist sits up just underneath where your rib cage ends. So that's where you measure for your waist. And typically your waist is your smallest area or the smallest measurement. It's not always, um, but it's good to have that measurement because especially if you're making something that you want to kind of fit, you need to know where that take-in area is. You're having a great time. Sorry, I'm laughing at some of the comments. Um... <laughs> we have a super chat from Sherry. Hi, Sherry. Thank big you. thank you to Sherry. <laughs> And we have a new member who joined our Silk level. Thank you. Um, welcome to the family. Welcome, Kathleen. Kathleen. Thank you, Kathleen. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Anything else? Yes. Anything? For the new, all the new members that are joining mm -hmm. today, um, you want to explain how to get all like the old member content? Yes. Um, we've we have got, two places. We've got two places you can go find members' content. So if you go to the community tab on our YouTube channel homepage, go to the community tab, you can just sort of scroll backwards in time through all of the posts that are there because that's where everything lands. Yeah. Um, and we also have a playlist, I think, on the channel homepage yes. that's members' content. So you can just click on that and go through it too. And I there's some will stuff there. post our YouTube channel homepage In the chat And box. of course, in joining Moody's. <laughs> Mr. and Stitch has made those, so they're yes. all sitting there waiting to be used. Uh, okay, I'm going to continue. So we've done chest, the bosom area, we've done the waist and where it actually sits, and it's the same on everybody. So find the bottom of, like, the rib cage, and that's the waist. The waist sits up high. Now, ladies, we've got hips, most of us, and that's what you want to, you also want to hip measurement. That also takes a bit of playing around with. So... 
your hips sit kind of like across, they should be kind of across your, your, your butt, but, uh, but <laughs> butts can also sag a little bit. So this is another thing you want to do. You want to find that biggest measurement. So you, you might, you know, start up here, measure that, go down a couple centimeters, measure that area, keep, keep going until you feel like you can pull that little measuring tape up and down over top of your rump. And if it's too tight, you've got to remeasure. And this is important, mainly for making like skirts, uh, dresses, pants even. But sometimes if you're making a really long sweater or a long poncho or something that's kind of form fitting and you want it to, um, you don't want it to catch on your hips, especially if your hips are a wider circumference than your bosom. So my hips are definitely much bigger around than my bosom area. And if I wanted to make a nice long, fitting um, cardigan or sweater, this is the biggest measurement I would want to keep in mind while I was working on that item of clothing, because I wouldn't want it to fit nicely over my bosom and then nicely over my waist. And then like I can't pull it down over top of my hips. So sometimes um, if someone says, you know, take your biggest torso measurement, especially if it's going to go down over your hips, that's the measurement you want. So Phil, play around with it until you find sort of where it is. And uh, what have I got this on here? I got this on centimeters. This is going to sound huge. <laughs> 97 centimeters. That's my waist. Or what is that in inches? Um, I mean, not my waist. I should say it's my hips. So I'm making sure that it's at my widest area. What is that? About 38, 39, 38. 38, 38 inches. That's my hips. So you want to make sure you're taking the widest area. And that's, you know, wherever, usually that's kind of where your cheeks are, but that could also be like, you know, this whole hip area. So you want to take your circumference in a few different locations to find out what the biggest one is. And that's useful if you're making like a dress or a skirt or a long sweater or things. Now, here's some other things you might want to keep in mind when you're taking measurements. The length of a sweater or a dress or a shirt changes on people. So some people have really long backs and some people don't. You'll often hear um, a measurement, so you want to take the measurement from the nape of the neck to the, the lower back area. What is that? I'm not going to do it because it's too complicated, but I'll show you what this is. So the nape of the neck is basically wherever your necklace sits. So I've got a necklace on. It sits right here. I can feel that vertebrae. It's about level with where my shoulders start to go out. That's the nape of the neck. So it's sort of the base of the neck, kind of level with this area here. You would hold the measuring tape here and pull it all the way down to the lower back. The lower back is right where your tailbone starts to sort of scoop out into your butt. So all the way down to about here. So nape of neck to lower back. That, image, that measurement there is really important because that is the measurement between the bottom of the neckline to usually right above where you start making the ribbed pattern or maybe the border on a sweater. That covers the whole back area, that length measurement. That's nape of neck to lower back. <clears throat> Excuse me. Some things are pretty easy to measure. Uh, sleeves, typically that's from the edge of the body of the pattern to the wrist. Sweaters can change. Sometimes you might have a sweater that has like a, um, the seam is here. You might have a drop sleeve sweater where the sleeve edge is actually a bit further down the arm. Maybe you are doing something that's got a very narrow um, or maybe it comes right from the collar. So um, that name of that takes me at the moment. Somebody will know it. But when you, some sweaters are made where there's the collar and then the actual sleeve is almost like a bat wing sleeve and like the whole thing kind of comes from the neck down. But it will usually tell you. In a pattern, a pattern will say, you know, measure from here to here or this is the actual measurement that we're concerned with. So if you're measuring mostly the sleeve <clears throat> area for an arm, the arm for a sleeve, <laughs> You want to take it from the corner of the shoulder and you want to go all the way out to <clears throat> the edge of the wrist. So the wrist is basically where if you're wearing an, a, a bracelet, where it naturally ends. If you want a longer um, sleeve, then you can you know, measure it down to about halfway across the hand. And if you want a shorter one, you can sort of end it wherever you want. But typically the wrist <clears throat> is where a a little bracelet would naturally sort of end on your arm. Pardon me. It's not COVID, I just had bad allergies. 
<clears throat> okay, so we've got head, neck, we've uh, talked about this measurement, we've talked about this measurement, we've talked about the chest, the waist, the hips. Uh, legs are usually, there's the inseam, so if you hear about the inseam, that's literally where your leg ends at the crotch area, measured down to about your ankle. The outside seam on a pair of pants is usually from the waist, so remember, right where your rib cage ends, so from here all the way down to the same area on your ankle. So that can be quite a different uh, measurement difference, but that's important to, to know if you're making pants or you're making sort of a skirt and you want sort of things to kind of flare out. Um, I want to talk a little bit about my dress and a couple of other things. So this isn't necessarily crochet or knitting related, but there is some crossover. So I'm going to sit back down here and I'm going to sort of straighten out my, my little measuring tape. Um, if I missed a measurement like feet or anything like that, um, Again, it depends. It depends entirely on the pattern. But um, if, if I've missed anything, and anybody's got any questions, we can take a few questions at the end. But I just want to cover some helpful information from patterns. Um, <clears throat> this, these are sewing patterns. They've changed a lot over the years. I intentionally got one. This is from 1972. This one's from 1990. In 1972, you know, you would have seen things like size 910, size 1112, size 1314, stuff like that. Typically, there are measurements on the back of a pattern that talk about the chest size or the, the um, chest, bosom, um, bust. They, they have a bunch of different names. Waist, hips, anything that kind of matters. It'll usually say on the back. So you can compare your measurements with these measurements, and that'll tell you where you fall in with the sizes. So if you're a 910 or a 1314. Same thing. This is a 1990s pattern. Instead of size numbers, they went with... Um, Super small, sort of extra, extra, extra small, extra small, small, medium, large, extra large. So those are the numbers. But the same thing, they've got measurements for all the important areas on listed here. And then you can compare your measurements and you'll know exactly where you would fit in. So if you were buying a pattern that was specifically for an extra large, then you'd want to make sure, yeah, those are the measurements. Um, so that's the pattern I want. But depending on where the patterns come from, it doesn't always like some countries <clears throat> have different sizing um, and have different sizing criteria. So for example, an extra large in one country might not be the same thing in another country. So if you're buying a sweater and the sweater says extra large and it's a pattern and you're not sure, well, is that like, you know, what kind of extra large is that? Then um, you can, if you, if you can ask, ask, if you can't, then make the gauge up and decide based on the gauge sort of how big those, how big that stitchery looks to you. So again, we come back to the gauge. Gauge is very important. Um, but often a pattern will also tell you if measurements are important, sort of like where you should be measuring, because that's how the pattern was designed. Not all patterns are going to use the same sets of measurements when they are designing, because not all sweaters look the same. Some of them are meant to be really baggy. Some of them are meant to have sort of a tailored look. Some of them are meant to be, you know, super bulky. The sleeve can start in different places. Um, so measurements can vary. And it's the more you make stuff and the more you kind of read stuff, the more you'll be like, oh, I, I recognize that. That's going to be a such and such. I need to measure this area. I need to pay more attention to that. Um, I also wear this dress because I wanted to just sort of talk about it a little bit. Um, this is the pattern <laughs> for it. Um, this pattern was made by someone called Pineapple Pop on Etsy. And I've been sewing for... 30 years, more than 30 years. And I have sewn from patterns, I've sewn coat couture, I've sewn just from measurements only. This is the best pattern I have ever used in my life. It, it tells you, it's like 38 or 40 pages long. She doesn't leave out a single thing. She talks to you like you're a regular human being. And if you've never sewn anything before in your life, you can come out the other end with a dress. And it doesn't matter what your size is, how old you are, um, she basically tells you exactly what you need to know to make a dress to fit you perfectly. There's a little bit of elastic in it. It, it laces up the back, it's really fancy. It's called a festival dress. And of course you can make it just nice and plain like I did with just making like with one kind of fabric. Or she even kind of explains how you can go nuts and make like it all different patchwork and stuff. So if you really want like a really hippie boho look or if you just want something really, simple and plain like you could just make this all in white it would just look so cute uh this is the best sewing pattern i've ever used in my life and if that pattern is still available on etsy at pineapple pops shop um she was selling clothing for a while i don't know if she still is but that pattern is a it's called a tutorial pattern and it's got photographs in it it's got unbelievable lists it's got a long prelude it's got like just information on her 
it's the best sewing pattern I've ever used. I got this on the first try and it fits. It's the best fitting dress I've um, ever had. A lot of people in the chat are complimenting the dress and especially the back. The back is very, very I pretty. love it. I love that lace up. Like I said, I wanna, all the credit goes to Pineapple Pop. It is the best sewing pattern I have ever used. And she talks about measurements. And if you're unsure about sewing or even knitting and crocheting sweaters, this this pattern I found just helped with a whole lot of things. Like she talks about strap length and just all sorts of stuff. So even if you're going to be knitting later, and the reason I bring up the sewing is because if you are crocheting or knitting an article of clothing, especially like a top, sometimes you can use a sewing pattern as a template, especially if you don't mind sort of sewing up the edges. So what you would do is you would take the sewing template, you know, make sure that it fits it's the right kind of sizing, and then don't do anything insane, just use single crochet or half double or double crochet and lay the pattern down on the table. Treat it like you're just trying to cover it. You start with a chained length, make sure it's the same width. Make sure you have enough turning chains to keep that width and then you either increase or decrease as necessary to make sure that your, your crochet fabric fits over top of that template. You might have a little bit of like kind of, you know, pixelating sort of edges in some places. It doesn't matter. Once you get it all sewn together, it'll completely disappear. But if you've never made a sweater before and you've got um, like a top or some kind of sewing pattern, um, you might want to try that. It's kind of kind of neat. You just basically create crochet or knit fabric that matches the template image. I've even got, let me just pull this out here. So I'm just going to pull out. So for example, let's say that this is your sewing pattern template. This is, I think this is the waistband of a pair of pants. You would lay this flat on the table and you could either start working from one edge, like the long ways or sort of short, short ways. And you would just chain a length that's the same width and then start crocheting. Keep laying it on top. Make sure that you don't have to stretch it to make it match and you don't have to like bunch it up. And then work as many rows as you need to until it covers that completely. And you've literally just made a piece of fabric that is exactly the same shape as that sewing piece of pattern. So that's fun to try if you, especially if you've got sort of some sewing patterns or you find them in the secondhand stores, that's fun. Um, and that's essentially what making a sweater pattern is all about. You're trying to make pieces that fit onto the body. And if you're trying to make something that fits you exactly, then that's what you want to do. You want to make make a pattern template, lay it flat, and actually create that piece of fabric that fits on top of it. It's kind of like the reverse. As opposed to cutting fabric to match, you're creating fabric to match. Um, it's like reverse engineering a pattern. <laughs> anyway, I mentioned that because if you really want to kind of give it a try, even something super simple, like a tube top, you know, you just want to make yourself a rectangle that is the largest part of your circumference measurement and maybe with a little bit of uh, elastic down here, and that will kind of keep it on and nice and tidy, maybe a little elastic at the top, just so it closes in. Add yourself a couple of straps, you just crochet some straps, and then you've made yourself a cute little tube top. Don't start with something complicated if you've never made clothing before, because it's easy to get confused, disappointed with yourself. Start with something super simple. Um, that's why, you know, we like to do hats. We like to do um, basic sort of ponchos and stuff where you can just take some measurements and then you get something that fits you perfectly um, because you're taking your own measurements and it's not a complicated pattern. Um, you want to start with sort of simple things and then gradually work your way up to making items of clothing like a sweater that's maybe gotten multiple pieces. My grandmother was always making sweaters, knitting them that had like, you know, this front side and that like, you know, gusset and then like this part of the sleeve and then it only seemed here and it had a bunch there. Super complicated stuff, looked amazing when it was all done, but she'd also been like knitting for 50 years. So she really knew what she was doing. Um, so start simple and keep measuring yourself. So back to measurements. If you're measuring a child, if you're measuring yourself, you're measuring a loved one, you have to keep measuring. So even we change, you know, things kind of move around. <laughs> sometimes you maybe put on a little weight, sometimes you lose a little weight. Um, uh, if you're, you know, if the things kind of tend to shift on you, if you're, you know, not, in this lockdown, I have not been exercising, so I'm definitely noticing some shifting. <laughs> um, and <laughs> hair can change. Maybe you have you had more hair at one point. Maybe you have less hair. Um, so you want to kind of refresh your, take your measurements every time you go to make something, especially with children. Children change overnight. So you want to make sure you're measuring them regularly, too, if you're making something for them. 
And one of our family members asked about measuring dolls. And I have one here and I just want to sort of, before we get to some questions, I just want to kind of quickly talk about that. The nice thing about dolls, especially 18 inch dolls, if you want to make them some clothing, is that they're kind of built like children. So they don't, you don't have to really worry too much about, um, uh, you know, darts and stuff in the chest area because they don't have a shelf. <laughs> they're nice and flat on both sides. So same thing goes for a doll. If you want to take a head circumference, you take, you take that measurement all the way around the head, over the forehead, and over their little ears. Um, if they have a lot of hair or they have their hair up in big thick braids or something, make sure you're taking it over top of those braids or of that hair because hair thickness can really change on a doll. Um, and depending on how the doll wears her hair most frequently is how you would want to take that measurement. Um, same thing with the neck, measure around the neck. Um, they don't have very long neck dolls mostly, so just that one little measurement will be enough. Length of the arm, so from shoulder, and there's usually an actual seam in the doll where you can stick that measuring tape, measure from here down to her little wrist. Um, measure around the chest, so you'd put her arms up and you'd measure all the way around this area here. The chest and the waist are typically the same. So sometimes there's a little bit of booty on a dolly. Um, they might have a little bit of a bottom and you might wanna take that measurement. So all the way around the bottom, but there probably won't be too much of a change between the chest and the bottom measurement, but take that measurement just in case because not all dolls are made the same. Same thing with the leg. You've got your inseam that starts at about the crotch area and then down to the ankle or the outside seam, which is up sort of over the top of the butt area. So the little hip on a doll down to the edge of the ankle. Um, that's if you're making a pair of pants. And um, you can also measure the circumference of the leg. So that's something I didn't talk about. Um, if you're making leg warmers or something that's kind of supposed to be tight fitting on a leg, we don't typically do a lot of that. But if you are making leg warmers, you want to know how tall you want your leg warmer. So is this just going up to your calf? Is it just supposed to slouch around your ankles? Do you want it to go all the way up over your knee? You need those measurements, how long you want it to be. And then you need to find the widest part of your leg. So I'm going to stand up again. If you are measuring, um, I can't really show it here. I don't think I'm even on camera. But if you're going to measure your leg and you're, you're making a let's say leg warmers, they go up over your knee, then you want to measure around your calf because calves can be pretty big on some people, especially if you, you know, move around a lot, like you're really like into exercise, you might have really developed calf muscles. Sometimes it closes in again, it gets a little thinner just below the knee. The knee can sometimes be bigger. And then of course the thigh muscle coming up to the top of the knee can be quite large too, especially if it's developed because you're, you know, you're running or something. So depending on how long you want that, thing like a leg warmer you want to measure all the areas that change over a leg now children's legs are typically kind of they don't change a whole lot from ankle up to knee especially the younger oh, oh sorry they're... sweetie i was uh busy in, with my head in the chat oh were you i didn't switch <laughs> It's okay. It wasn't really. There we go. There we go. We're now now we now we got it. It was. I wasn't able to show a whole lot anyway. But we're just talking about kind of on the leg. You want to measure all the sort of areas, sort of like over the knee, the knee, just under the knee, around the calf area, and down to the ankle, because that can change quite a bit on some legs. On other legs, it can be, you know, maybe there isn't a whole lot of definition, and so, but you still want to do the same thing like you are with a torso. You want to find the largest areas and the smallest areas. And leg warmers need to be able to go up and over top of the widest or the largest cir circumference if it's going to be going up and over top of that. So if it's gonna, if it's designed to go up and over your calves, you wanna make sure you take that calf measurement because calves can sometimes be quite big and powerful. Um, and that's, you know, you don't want your, you don't wanna make it so tight that it won't go up and over top of your calf muscle. Same thing goes for socks. I'm gonna sit back down again. Aha, uh -huh. thank you. <laughs> I hope I, I hope I still get my lunch today. I don't know. I, you, you, I might have to retract my statement about you always being right. Because <laughs> I'm going to get beans and rice gonna, instead of like, like pizza or something. Beans and rice. Beans and rice is one of my favorites. It's pretty good, actually. Uh, okay. So I just want to sum up here. There's a whole lot to talk about when it comes to measurements. First of all, if you have a pattern that has a gauge, do the gauge sampler. Please do that. I can't stress that enough. It will save you so much heartache down the road. Um, secondly, Make sure that if there are specific measurements to be taken in a pattern, you take them. Usually they'll explain it, like, you know, make sure you, you know, circumference of neck, circumference of head, you know, le length of arm, length of leg, stuff like that. Uh, take those measurements. 
and write them all down. It's always good to have them written down. If you are making something from scratch and you know you need the chest measurement, the waist measurement, and the hip measurement, then Always take those measurements just before you sit down to make the item of clothing, whether it's for you or a child or somebody else, because our measurements can change. If you are making um, an item of clothing for a woman and it's going to include the bust measurement because it's some kind of like a, like a nice fitting gown or a sweater or something, make sure you take that measurement over the bra that you are most likely going to be wearing and find the widest circumference and make sure you take a breath before you take that measurement. Also, do not suck in when you're taking that, that waist measurement because you don't want to, you know, as much as you might go, oh, look how thin I can be. <laughs> or I don't look half bad when I suck in. You're making clothing and clothing ultimately has to be comfortable if you want to wear it. So you don't want to go through all the trouble of making something that's not going to be comfortable when you put it on. So make sure you take all of those natural measurements, you know, your, your, <laughs> maybe you're a bit bloated, maybe you're, you know, like your, your shelf has moved a bit, whatever bra you're going to wear, make sure you take those real measurements and take honest measurements, be honest with yourself, be honest with your partner, um, because ultimately that is what makes an item of clothing look good, is measurements. Um, Mama and Stitches, if she was here, I'd ask her a bunch of questions, because she's also got a lot of information for making clothing to fit the body. She's quite the seamstress. And um, and also how to fit clothing to larger shapes or shapes that are a little like that feel uneven or something. It's the same thing. You wanna find all of those measurements that are, you wanna know where your biggest parts are. You wanna know where your smallest parts are. And when you're making clothing or adjusting clothing to fit, you really wanna pay attention to those real measurements. Don't fake your measurements because real clothing made with real measurements to fit that real body always looks good. Always. That's why clothing that comes off the rack that's made for like a wide range of, of, of like, you know, oh, well, that's for that's for medium. Well, what's medium exactly? It might look good on one person. It might not look on another because they can't be as exacting with all of those measurements. Um, and that's why whole couture clothing and fashion looks so good. It was literally made to fit a specific set of measurements. So be honest with your measurements. Are there any questions? Well, let's give it a minute. Uh, questions in regards to measurements, mm -hmm. if anyone has any. Um, feet. I'll talk about that while Mr. Are you going to put your feet on the table? No. Come on. I'm not going to put my do feet it, on the do table. Do it. <laughs> That's going to be at least a foot. <laughs> you want to measure, for, if you're making socks or slippers, um, it's good to know the measurement from the big toe to the back of the heel. So from the edge of the big toe to the back of the heel, because typically a foot is shaped where the big toe is sort of like the furthest away from the heel because the bigger toe is the big toe. And then there's like a little bit of a slant that goes from big down to little. So you wanna take the measurement from the end of the big toe all the way to the very back of the heel, because that is going to be the whole length of the foot. And it's the, the most, the, the longest part of the foot, that's how you measure it. And that's how you get a pair of slippers or a pair of socks to fit comfortably. The only other thing you need to know is maybe the circumference of the foot. So again, you want to measure all the way around a foot. So over the arch, under the arch, maybe around the ball of the foot, take those measurements and figure out where the widest part of the foot is. Some people have really high arches and um, or really, really uh, wide, wide balls of their feet. Um, you want to take all of those measurements to see how where the widest part of the foot is and then aim to make the sock or slipper at least that with that measurement, that circumference measurement, that that width, uh, because you you want again, you want the clothing to be comfortable. And if it's too small or it's too tight, it, it won't fit right. It won't be comfortable. Um, so those are important measurements. So the circumference of the widest part of the foot and the length from the end of the big toe to the back of the heel. Um, ankles can change. You can make it as tall as you want. But if the ankle is wide, let's say you've got like really, really big ankles, then you maybe make sure you take that circumference too. So you know that you're making the top of your sock or your slipper to be comfortable there. Okay, so we'll take these two. Mm -hmm. uh, so the first one is from Queen. Hi, Queen. How can one measure the amount of fabric needed for ruffles? I am making a dress for myself with big biffies, biffles. Ruffles, I guess. Um, the other question is from uh, Rosemary. What about measuring an armhole, like for a crochet sweater? Yeah, no problem. So we'll do those and we'll wrap it up. For ruffles, depends on how ruffle you want it. Um, <laughs> but a pleat is usually three times the length. 
Um, and so a real wild ruffle would be about the same measurement. So anywhere between twice and three times the length of the edge that that ruffle is going on is the length of the fabric you want to ruffle. So like I said, if you're pleating, then you want three times the length of the measurement. If you want a real, if it's thick fabric, you don't want to do three times because it will stick out. If it's really, really light fabric, like a really, really thin cotton or a really nice silk or something, then you can still go three times the length that that ruffle is going to go on, that edge ruffle. Um, but I would do anywhere between two and three times, maybe two, two and a half times. And that way, if you're gathering it, you get like a nice ruffly effect, but it won't be so much that it fans out and sticks out at the bottom. So that's a good rule of thumb for ruffles. Um, and that sounds really pretty. I love ruffles. <laughs> Armhole, great question. <clears throat> Take your measuring tape and you want, that. so the measurement of the armhole, again, should be the widest part of your arm. So if the armhole is right here, so again, if the edge of the sleeve is on that edge of the shoulder, then you want to take the measurement, hold your arm up and go all the way around that hole. So all the way around the arm, that circumference measurement there. Make sure it's no smaller than that. But you might want to go a hint larger because a lot of arms fall into a bicep. I have like no bicep right now because, you know, I haven't been exercising. Because lockdown. Because lockdown. And, and, and uh, plus I never and, have biceps. And chips and pizza. <laughs> chips and pizza. <laughs> um, so you want to take that measurement and you want to make sure it's not too tight because I hate I hate it when the sleeve of something is like tight. That's the most uncomfortable thing and I won't wear it. And it also won't move properly. Remember, you are an organic object in motion. If you're like me, you're never sitting still. And so you want your clothing to be able to move comfortably and not be rigid because if it's rigid, you're not gonna be able to function in it properly. So that's the circumference and make sure it's no smaller than that. If your arm or the arm that you're making the sleeve for really opens up into a big strong bicep like on a guy, do not make that sleeve the same circumference as here. Um, my friend's husband's got great big massive pipes on him and he can never find shirts to fit because even if it fits here and it fits around his chest, it's too tight on his sleeves. So make sure you take that measurement too. If, he's, if he or she's got nice big powerful arms or a lot of like extra meat in here, take that flex and take the biggest circumference measurement so that at least the sleeve will fit over that. Um, and then don't be too tight through here. If it's a drop sleeve, same thing. Where is that seam going to be? Make sure that it is no smaller than the circumference of the area where that sleeve is going to end. Um, so you take the circumference and by circumference, once again, I mean measuring it all the way around that widest point. So that's that. Any other questions? Um, I think that was the main one. Measurements, ruffles, yeah. I love it. Um... We are at an hour and 17 Okay, minutes. well, I think that's that's probably enough. If anybody has questions that pertain to measurements that for some reason we didn't cover in today's chat, then please feel free to leave it in the comment section. And once this um, becomes a video and um, obviously the live chat isn't working anymore, then we will try to get to as many of those comments and questions as we possibly can. Yes. Um, so just to recap, that um, everyone watching, if you came in late, you can re-watch the video when it archives to our channel. Yes, yeah. Once the live stream is over, it'll be up to watch It'll be a complete as many times video. as you need to. Yeah, so if you think there may have been something you missed, we may have covered it earlier on. Um, I highly recommend having a measuring tape in your collection, maybe two, maybe three, maybe five, I don't know. <laughs> I like to have lost them in a place where I can grab them. And I recommend getting a measuring tape. Most of them come like this, but I get, I recommend having one that has this, the metric system on one side and the inches and feet system on the other side, just so you can be bilingual in your measurements if you need to be, especially it helps if you're going from a pattern that's old or a pattern that's from a different country and you can sort of translate it into measurements that you're more comfortable with. I think that's really important too. Um, Kay Chada says, thank you, you are a gem. Oh, thank you. And I have, I have to agree. <laughs> ooh, ooh, can I get that on replay? <laughs> oh no. I think we should go back to when you said I'm right all the time. That was like, that was like, oh, golden moment in time. Golden moment. <laughs> I'm so glad it's recorded. Yes. <laughs> Um, um, it looks like we've wrapped it up. Okay. Um, the, it's more everyone just kind of saying thanks. Have All a right. great weekend. Great. Have um, a great weekend, everybody. Um, stay safe. Yes, Jada does sew her own dresses. Yes. And yes, she did sew the yes, ones she I was did. wearing and once today. Again, 
I'm going to open this up. Um, this is the pattern. It's by Pineapple Pop. She has the pattern available for sale on her Etsy shop. This is not, this whole thing is actually three of her patterns. I bought all of them because the first one was just so darn good. Yeah. Um, it's the best sewing pattern I've ever had, whether you're brand new sewing or you've been sewing for 30 years like me, um, it doesn't matter. She takes you through it step by step. You can make it super simple like this one, just one kind of clothing, one one kind of fabric, or you can make it like crazy and patchwork and add stuff. And okay, like, one last question sweet. in regards to measurements. Sure. This is from Naya. Naya asks, how do we know how many chains we have to crochet according to the measuring tape? So it depends on the stitch pattern you're using, but as a rule of thumb, if the measurement is six inches, you begin with a chain length that matches your six inches. Start there. Now, if you crochet tightly, you wanna add a couple extra chains because you're probably gonna get smaller. If you crochet loosely, I wouldn't go over the six inches, but if you're doing a stitch pattern that has a stitch multiple, so for example, a V-stitch is usually a multiple of three plus one or two chains, depending on the pattern, you want to chain a length that matches that measurement, then count them up. Is it a multiple of the multiple that you need to have in order to make that stitch pattern? So in this case, let's say, is it a multiple of three? Yes, no. If it's not, go up to the closest multiple of three, don't go down, and then add any extra chains that are required to begin. So for example, you'll hear, you know, this pattern can be worked over a foundation chain that is any multiple of three plus four. They mean multiple of three, and then at the very end, one, two, three, four, because those are your little turning chains that kind of get you started. So make it to match that measurement and then add your extra turning chains. If um, you're making an item of clothing, and it's a stitch pattern and it's a yarn and a hook size that you don't use all the time. Definitely make that little, like make up a little gauge, which is usually, I don't know, it's usually around 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters or about four inches by four inches, sometimes a little bigger than that. Make up the gauge first and measure it because that'll tell you whether or not like you're going to be a bit tighter than your foundation chain or if you're gonna be a bit wider than your foundation chain. So uh, so much depends on the stitch pattern. Um, but that's how I would start. So if I was making a blanket, for example, and I wanted to use a V-stitch pattern, and I knew that I needed a multiple of three, and I wanted my foundation chain length to be five feet wide, I would chain, 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 measure it against that, that found, so lay it on the floor, lay out your measuring tape, lay your foundation chain across it, don't stretch it, <laughs> just lay it neatly. And then once you've got that five foot measurement, so it works out to be that five foot length or whatever length you're going for, count them up, make sure that it's a multiple, have a, like a calculator handy, that's always handy. And then if you still need to add a few to get to a multiple, do that, then add the extra turning chain. So always go over, don't go under. All right, let's wrap it up. Okay, thank you all for joining us. I hope that you were able to learn a little something about measurements, how to measure, where to measure, um, the measurements that are important and when they're not. Um, if you've got questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below, especially if you missed it during the uh, chat. And um, have a great weekend. Stay safe, stay crafty. If you're still at home, try to enjoy that. <laughs> uh, get busy in a craft, maybe watch something uh, fun, you know, uh, do a little do a little surfing around Pinterest or Etsy if you're looking for some inspiration. Um, visit, you know, YouTube, maybe do a little, uh, go down a couple of rabbit holes. I like doing things like uh, bohemian decor for the bedroom. And then what do I find? Oh, there's just so much like tasty little, and it's a fun way to kill a few hours, especially if you think, oh my gosh, I can't stare at these four walls for any longer. Uh, so try to keep yourselves distracted and crafty <laughs> and happy and cheerful. If it's hot where you are, try to stay cool. If it's cool, try to stay warm. <laughs> And we'll see you next week. Next week for a new video. Ba, ba, ba. And everyone who's a new member, um, familiarize yourself with the community tab yeah. to see all the bonus content and the playlist. And the playlist. The members playlist. On the channel and homepage. Yeah. Um, if you're and looking then we'll for, have a new uh, public video for If you're brand new to um, the channel in general, um, so if you're a new subscriber or you're brand new here, we have uh, free crochet patterns over on our website, jadaandstitches.com, ah, yes, on the plug that in pattern here. workshop page. So if you land on our website, you've got to go to the pattern workshop page. We've got oodles of free uh, patterns in there. 
some of them are blankets, some of them are clothes. They kind of run the gamut. Some of them are toys. Um, and they use almost all of them. I think almost, I think all of them now have uh, almost all of them have a tutorial that goes with it. Um, almost, almost, almost all of them. Yeah, not quite. Um, so if you're still learning how to read patterns, then pull out a pattern, sit down with the tutorial, and just follow along, and they'll give you a really great idea of how that works. And then that opens up the universe of written patterns to you, which is just never ending. It's so nice. Um, so there's that, and. Um, Oh, I don't know how many YouTube videos we have. Well, I'm going to put the how to search our channel for. Okay. We've also got a summer playlist. So if you're looking for something light, if you're looking for lace, if you're looking to make things like these crocheted covered buttons, I love this. I wear this all the time. Um, we have a tutorial on that. These are nice light things. So if it's hot, you mm -hmm. just sort of want to play around with your thread, then give that a whirl. Um, if you're down in May, if you're still awake, if you're down in New Zealand or uh, <laughs> Australia and you're in winter, I think it's the first day of winter for you guys tomorrow. If anyone's um, curious, we also have a winter playlist. <laughs> curious about becoming a member, I'll put the video info for that in the. Oh, and check out Amazon. If you um, aren't going out and doing any shopping, Amazon has these fun little, all sorts of these little retractable uh, measuring tapes. They don't have to be very expensive. Um, they're really great to have. You can order a couple and um, if you use, not for very much. And if you use our link on our website to well, yeah. go to Amazon, it helps us out. Yeah, we also have- We an, have affiliate links. We have a, on a, I think it's and, called the shopping page. And it doesn't matter if you're in, from another country or, or in the United States, you just use our link. And then when it says, um, just hey, log in. you know, you're not in your, do, don't you link. want the American yeah. version? Say, sure. You say, yes, I want that one. And it still counts for us. Yeah, so, so there's that. And we've, we've, we've itemized a bunch of things. I think, I think we've got measuring tapes over on the, the shopping page. I think we do. Yeah. Um, we've got a few. We've got we've sort of curated a handful of tools and, and things there on that page that you might be looking for, um, especially like the yarn needles, the wool needles that you guys see me use that have like the big loop end. Mm -hmm. Those they're, things are amazing. On there, um, yeah. So yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, if you're looking for some new tools. That's okay. An, almost an hour and a half. Oh my today. goodness. Well, I could probably talk about measurements for another two hours because there is so much to cover. But we <laughs> wanted to it's a good start. Yeah, we wanted to get into the basics today. Um, we can always do more at a later date, maybe really drill into something specific and, and get to get serious about it. But I hope that gets you all started. You're heading into the weekend. Make yourself something. Uh, make somebody you love something. Make something. Just make something. <laughs> and we will see you soon. So thanks for joining us. Take care. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Stay crafty and uh, have a good weekend. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>